Hi, this is Rochelle at Scrapcraftastic, and I am going to make myself a custom cover for this knockoff uh, week's planner that I'm going to be using as a body book. I have a clear cover on it from Print Pression. The actual planner is from Amazon, and I will link to it in the description box below. I'm using the clear cover from Print Pression as somewhat of a template to determine what size insert will fit within the clear cover. I marked a piece of cardstock and I am using that as a base for my cover. I'm trimming it down just a little bit inside of the marks that I made because I know I need to allow for the seams in the clear cover. And even though I did that, I still, uh, it's still a little bit too big. So I'm going to trim down just a little bit more. Here, I'm just adding an arrow so that I know which uh, way is up because the paper is almost square. There, I was just making sure that the base piece would actually cover the planner. It's still a pretty tight fit for the clear cover, but it does fit. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to do a little mixed media treatment on this cardstock. Again, I wanted to do something custom, something different, something that I would really like for the cover of the body book. So I have my silicone mat here and I have a container with a third of a cup of water and I have this bottle of white glue Jot brand from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to add this bottle of glue to the water. That's eight ounces. Um, this is a DIY Mod Podge. And that's what I'm going to be using for my cover. So if you don't have Mod Podge, this is a good way. And I kind of like this a little bit better than the Mod Podge because it doesn't end up with that sticky, tacky feeling that you get with Mod Podge. And I don't know if I get that feeling from it because of the humidity here where I live or if that is just standard for my podge. So, but I like this a little bit better because it does not have that sticky, icky feeling. Then I have some scrap pieces of paper that I have jazzed up. Um, with different sprays and splatters and paints. And actually on this batch that I did, I actually spilled some paint in there. So some pieces are brown because of that. But I'm gonna use my homemade Mod Podge to adhere these strips. Most of these strips are scraps from cutting inserts or other papers. And instead of just tossing those pieces I jazzed them up using a method that I learned about watching Louise Hansel. I hope I'm saying her name correctly. I also saw this done on 49 Dragonflies. So I'll link to both of those videos so that you can see how to jazz up your scraps if you want to. I'll probably be doing another batch soon. So if you would like me to share a tutorial or tips on how to do it, let me know in the comments below. So I'm just laying out these pieces, spreading them out, kind of making a master board with them. Just a mixed media design that I can use as my cover. Some of this has some gold metallic ink and paint on it as well. Lots of different treatments. It has some glimmer sprays. It has paint, glimmer spray, stain, 
all types of things that I used when I created these jazzed up scraps. And I'm not worrying too much about the pieces hanging over the edges because once it's dry, I can easily just trim the overhang off. And I do have cardstock uh, scraps in this batch, but I am trying to stick to the pieces that are paper based. I think I used one piece of cardstock and everything else is paper. I'm carefully smoothing out my DIY Mod Podge and I'm going to leave this to dry completely. So this is what it looks like after it dried. I'm going to trim off the overhang. And this is a little stiffer than I expected it to be. So it is gonna take a little molding to go around the book. So now I'm going to add just some stamping to give it more of that mixed media feel. I'm going to use my favorite script stamp. Just add a little script here and there on my cover. And here I am going to use these alpha from Tim Holtz to spell out healing. That was going to be um, the word of my word of the year, but I kind of changed my mind. I didn't want to use that one. So I'm using the Tim Holtz stamp platform because I'm sure I'll have to uh, do multiple impressions of the stamp. Anytime I feel like I'm going to need to stamp multiple times, I use the platform. So I'm just going to pull off the letters. I haven't used a lot of them, <laughs> as you can see. So I'm going to pull all of the ones that I need off and spell out the word healing. And for the ink, I'm using the Ranger Archival Ink in black. I will try and link to everything that I'm using, tools and supplies in the description box below. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink up the stamps. Here I am pressing down. Didn't get that great of an impression the first time around, which I suspected that would happen. So I'm going to do multiple impressions. This is what the final text looks like and I'm using my heating tool to dry the ink. I think the ink stayed a little wetter than norm it normally would because it was on top of the DIY Mod Podge. Here are some stamps that I've had in my collection for a while and haven't used and I thought it would be fun to use one of these on the cover. So I chose the one with the florals in the hair. And because I want her to kind of hang off the edge of the cover, I put a piece of paper behind the cover so that I wouldn't get ink on my platform. So here I'm flipping over the lid of the stamp platform. One side is for rubber stamps and the other side is for clear stamps. So I'm using a clear stamp this time. I need it to flip it over and I'm using the same ink to ink up the girl, the doll. 
I guess I can call her a doll. And again, I'm pressing down, making sure to get a good impression. It's a little difficult on the cover because um, of the texture that's there. So, and it's not just a completely flat surface. So here I have some gold ink. I'm gonna add some gold ink splatters. And I'm gonna use some watered down black acrylic paint to add some black splatters. And I'll do the same thing with white acrylic paint. And I'm gonna use my heating tool to dry the splatters. And any time that I do mixed media like this, it's always totally a learning experience. I learned a lot just from this simple project. Here I'm using a white gel pen to go around my letters. They didn't stand out as much as I had hoped they would. So I'm using the white gel to kind of make them pop off the page a little bit more and so that they're not so blended into the background of the cover. I'm also gonna add some highlighted areas in the doll uh, just to help her as well stand out from the background a little bit more. Okay, here is the moment of truth. I'm gonna add the cover into the clear cover. I guess this is a cover insert. So I'm gonna add the cover insert into the clear cover. And things are looking a little suspicious. <laughs> um, it's again, the cover, the insert is a little stiff. So I'm gonna to have to train it to fit a little better. And this is what the cover looks like. But if you look there on the back, I don't know if the paper shrunk. I don't know what happened, but I have extra space that I don't really like. I don't wanna start over. So I'm gonna use some washi tape to repair that and just make sure that that extra space is only on the back. Since it's just the back of the cover, I think it will be fine. Next time, what I would do is do the collaging with the jazzed up scraps first and then trim down the paper. I think that was my mistake. I should have trimmed it down after doing the collage. So here I'm just using some washi tape from Simply Gilded to extend that edge. Going ahead and round in those corners. And now I'm adding it back into the clear cover, making sure everything is aligned how I want it, making sure that washi tape is laying down flat in there. And let's put the planner back in to see what we've got. And as you can see there, this is a very cheap planner. You can see that the planner is coming loose from the binding already, just from the excessive handling I'm doing here. Um, so I'm not sure how well this is gonna hold up throughout the year, but we shall see. So the cover is still a little tight. Uh, again, that's from the stiffness of the paper, but overall, I think it turned out pretty well. Again, I'm gonna see how well this holds up throughout the year. So since I have the cover done, I decided to go in and actually change the dates. I had started this for the first week in January and I kind of wanted to include the last week of December and New Year's Day. So I'm redating this page 
and I'm going to go ahead and set it up. The date dots I use are from Crafting by the Pound and I'm using basic boxes that are available to Scrap Craftastic patrons. The date covers are from Piper Paper Company. This Christmas bow is from Cella Creates. The doll is one of my dolls from a few years back, as well as the candy cane. These label style boxes in the Merry and Bright are both from Webster's Pages, a freebie from Webster's Pages. I'm just kind of decorating the page with boxes in case I need to come in and write anything down. Here is my Christmas sticker storage book for the small stickers. And I'm going to use the Kwanzaa and Happy New Year stickers from here. not have these little gift icons from Piper Paper Company that I really need to use up so I'm going to create a little border at the bottom of the page using the gifts. So that's it for the spread and the body book. This is again what the cover looks like. I'm pretty pleased with it. Again, I would do a few things differently next time uh, since it is not going to stay closed until the paper relaxes a little bit. I'm going to use a hair tie to hold it closed and help train that paper. So that's it. I think it turned out really nice. I think it turned out really nice. Let me know in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you may be interested in this other video. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.